In lab 12, students investigate what happens when several pure substances are mixed with water. Using qualitative observations, students explain and identify characteristics of solutions by using keywords like dissolve, soluble, solute, solvent, and solution. Let's first take a look at a test tube containing water and food coloring. What properties can we observe in this mixture? First of all, we can state that it's a liquid and it's translucent. We can also see that it has a uniform appearance, which makes this a homogeneous mixture. This mixture is also known as a solution because there is a solvent, the water, and solute, the food coloring. Let's see what happens when five pure substances are mixed with water. We will start with copper sulfate by adding one lab scoop of the substance in a test tube filled with about five centimeters of water. Put a stopper on it and shake it 10 times. In your data table, write qualitative observations of the appearance. You will notice that the water has turned a light blue color. And even though there are still some crystals left at the bottom of the test tube, the water changing color is evidence that the pure substance did dissolve. Let's now put one lab scoop of sodium chloride into a test tube filled with 5 centimeters of water. After putting a stopper on it, shake the mixture 10 times and record your observations again. None of the solid crystals are visible. The water itself has a slight white color to it, making it appear a little hazy. Therefore, sodium chloride does dissolve in water. Now let's repeat the procedure with zinc oxide. After shaking the mixture, you will notice that the water is no longer clear. It appears milky and opaque. Because it looks like the color of the water changed to white, you might say that the substance did dissolve. However, after a minute or two, you will notice that the water becomes a little clear again and the zinc oxide settles to the bottom. Therefore, it does not dissolve in water. After putting a lab scoop of sulfur, you will notice that it does not dissolve in water. Some of the substance stays at the bottom because they are clumped together and some of it floats to the top, but none of it disappears. The same amount of sulfur is visible in the test tube. Therefore, this substance did not dissolve in water. The last substance is confectioner's sugar. After shaking the mixture 10 times, you will see that the clear water has turned into a hazy white color and none of the solid powder is left in the test tube. Therefore, this substance did dissolve in water. When a substance dissolves in a solvent, they are said to be soluble. And when a substance does not dissolve, they are said to be insoluble. The solutions that we made consist of a liquid solvent, or water in this case, and solute, the, the dissolved solid. Let's take a look at what happens when drops of water are added to two different substances. Place a couple of potassium permanganate crystals on a petri dish. Then using a pipette, slowly drop five to 10 drops of water to the substance. What observations can you make? The water is turning into a purple solution because the solute dissolved in the water. Therefore, potassium permanganate is soluble in water. When repeating the steps for sand, we can see that no change is occurring. The water is still clear and the sand is still a solid. The solute did not dissolve in the solvent, therefore, sand is insoluble in water. Students should be able to write in their own words what soluble, insoluble, solvent, solute, solution, and dissolve mean. These are terms that will be coming up in future labs as we learn about solubility of matter.